You may disagree with me, and that is okay. But I am going to say it. If I say stable in God, it doesn't really mean you do everything perfectly. I don't think any human on this earth does everything perfectly. So please understand what I am going to say. So once you become, I guess I can say more stable in God, you may think to yourself, pretty much the main thing is, or maybe the whole thing is, getting yourself right with God and then try to improve day to day. And I think that is part of it. I believe that is part of it. Another part of it, I believe, this may not be true for you. Maybe it is true for everyone if they go down this path. I believe when you become more stable in God, I believe he is going to use you to go in the path of others. You may say to me, Kevin, what are you talking about? Kevin, I don't think this is true. Once you begin doing what is right, not saying you are 100% perfect, but when you become stable, or should I say more stable, I believe God is going to use you to reach other people. Sometimes I think to myself, or maybe I would think to myself, as it seems, I run into particular types of people. Now, I can say, well, it is a coincidence. It is by chance. You know, this is not really happening. I could say that, but I think that would be naive. As it seems, I would not say I used to be that way. Now, there was a time when I was really bad, but I believe certain personality types are sent my way. I truly believe so. Am I telling you I was always perfect from birth to now? No, I am not saying that. Am I telling you I am better than you? I am not saying that. I am just trying to bring out a point. So I believe once you become more stable in Jesus Christ, I believe God will purposely bring people your way. So you not only if I am saying this right, you not only have to deal with your own problems, but you have to deal with someone else or some other people. I really hope this is making sense. And I truly believe that is part of your test. Let's say you had um, a fornication problem. Let's say you had a cussing problem, an anger problem, a patience problem. And let's say through the years or through time, you have been changing, you have been changing, you have been trying to do what is right, and you have been improving and improving and improving. Okay, as it seems, particular people 
may come to your path, or should I say down your path, to your path, to you, and they may ask for help, you know, like, uh, what does this mean of the Bible? Please teach me the Bible. And maybe because they have been hurt in the past, maybe they have been spoiled in the past, maybe they have been abused, for whatever reason, they give you a hard time and you may say, Kevin, I think I should not have to deal with that. And I believe depending on how they behave, I think you have to deal with them. I think they are part of, I believe they are part of your test. Are you really understanding what I am saying? You may think to yourself that all you have to do is get yourself right, worry about yourself, and that's it. That is not true. I am trying to tell you. That is not true. Yes, we have to be concerned about ourselves, but we have to be concerned about other people. And you may say to me, Kevin, you know, if I be that way, people will use me, people will name call me, people will insult me, people will do me wrong. And yes, <laughs> I believe they will. But we are not here for ourselves. Think about Jesus Christ. He went through all types of stuff for our sake. Now, we claim to be followers of him. Did Jesus do only things that benefit him? Of course not. He did things that benefited all of us. So how can we say we are followers of Jesus Christ if we are not there for other people? I know in some cases it may be very difficult to help certain people, I guess. You know, it may be a danger at times or whatever else like that. But please listen. This life is not only about you. This life is not only about me. We are here to help others. Am I talking about money only? No. Money, time, effort, maybe to speak with and encourage, maybe to visit and stuff like that. I am trying to tell you. So once you begin doing the right thing, and I guess a good word for it, once you begin being consistent, I guess, in Jesus Christ, I believe he will purposely, whether you want it or not, I believe he will purposely send people down your path for you to, I would say, influence and I would say, affect. Yes, everyone that is sent your way, you may not be able to teach to. Like, hey, you know, the Bible says blah, 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 blah. You may not go that far with them, but hmm, please listen to what I am saying. Please listen to what I am saying. You may not be able to teach all of them in a formal way. 
in a teaching way, I guess I can say. But if you are living by God's word and they can see it, I believe that is ministry to them within itself. I really hope this is making sense. All of our problems, I would say, are not really problems. I believe much of our problems are opportunities, like um, Joseph. Joseph went through all type of mess, stuff, bad things. I should say, but because I believe because he went through all those bad things, I believe he, if I am saying this right, became second in charge of Egypt. So was, can you say that was planned? Now, as it seems, I guess Joseph was righteous, but he didn't live his life only for himself. The way his life was, especially toward, you know, when he became second in charge of Egypt, he lived his life for others. You may say, Kevin, you know, I hear what you are saying, but Johnny is very annoying. Jill is very arrogant. Uh, Felicia is very rude and I don't want anything to do with them. But if they are constantly coming down your path, as it seems like you can't really escape them, you have to ask yourself, is there a purpose for this person to be in my life? I can't really escape them. I don't want to quit this job because I need this job, but this person is always around me. God, what is your purpose for me to be around that person? You have to ask yourself. I believe the Bible says, in general, we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. We should be the influencers, not Kanye West and Jay-Z and Beyonce and all these ridiculous rap artists. We should be the influencers. We should be the ones affecting people to do what is right. We are the salt. We are the light of the world, according to the Bible. Because we are living for God. You may not like dealing with people. And I don't really like dealing with particular people, but that must change. I wish, and I believe you will go down this path, or maybe you are already on this path, but I wish my patience for stubborn, hard-headed people, arrogant, prideful people was so much. I wish that I had no boundary for those troublemaking people because I believe if I had more patience and had more long suffering imagine how many more stubborn people I can really affect I hope this is really making sense For many of us, I believe God is sending those troublemaking people down our path for us to help them. Please listen to what I am understand. Please listen to what I am saying. We have to affect people. We have to help people. It's not about only us and Jesus. 
I just want to be around you, Jesus, only me and you. That is wrong. Not only you and Jesus, no. You have to help other people. So if you are the type of person that run away from every stubborn person, you are wrong. You are wrong. Kevin, I don't want to deal with people. I just want to focus on myself. You are wrong. We have to win souls. This is one of the reasons why I wish I was so much better than I am now. If, if I could stay more patient, stay like, I guess, emotionally numb at times, I think I can do so much a better of a job than what I am doing now. Because let's say there is a stubborn person speaking to me. Let's say no matter what they say, no matter how many times they insult me, no matter how many times they act rude, no matter how many times they act like an imbecile, like let's say I stay constant and not react and not really feel anything, but still be willing to be there for them, still be willing to teach to them, still be willing to do what is right toward them, I probably can win that soul. But how many of us are willing to go that far for the lost? You may say to me, Kevin, I'm willing to go this far for the lost and once they keep on pushing me away, that's it. And I understand what you are saying. But if we had no limits, willing to get pushed around by the lost, willing to be persecuted for the lost, willing to be go through suffering for the lost, do you know how much, do you know, like, I believe we would be able to do so much if we, I guess, had no boundaries. To a point, I guess. To a point. We are here for others. I believe there is a scripture. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, let's go to Matthew chapter 25. And let's start at verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was uh, in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Verse 37. Then shall the righteous, righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? 38. When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? 40. Okay. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily, I say unto you, and as much, and as much, and as much as ye have done it unto one of the least, least of these my brethren ye have done it unto me so i think this proves my point here we are not here for ourselves but we are yes we are here for ourselves yes 
but we are here for other people as well. So I would even go as far as to say, <laughs> you may not like this, but we are, we should be servants to other people. And you may say, Kevin, you know, I am no slave. You know, I, you know, I am not going to serve anyone. See, if you are not careful, it sounds like you are very selfish, self-absorbed, maybe even careless, concerned about yourself, but not really being concerned with others. What is that? That sounds like almost to it, I guess, some type of satanic stuff there. Sounds like something Satan would probably say, you know, I am concerned about myself. You know, I care about myself. Me, 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 me. No. I believe when it comes down to God, everyone should be helping everyone. Not, not only taking, but giving as well. Kevin, I don't have money. Is money the only thing a person can give? Is it really? Maybe you know how to do hair. Maybe you know how to mow the lawn. Maybe you know how to dig holes and pull weeds and and use a lawn edger. Maybe you know how to encourage people. Maybe you know how to shop for someone and give them food with their own money or something like that. Assist. Assist people. You don't always need to get paid to do something for someone. Well, Kevin, I'm not really interested in doing it then if they are not going to pay me. You are selfish. You are a selfish person wondering why so much bad things are happening to you. Aren't we going to reap what we sow? You are looking for help so much, but are you willing to help? So if you were to help people, won't help come back to you. Like myself, I help people. Maybe some of the people I help may not give to me back. It doesn't matter. Why? Because I know I will reap what I sow. So even if they don't give back to me, I believe by that law, I will be given unto in whatever way. That is right. So even if the people I help don't really appreciate what I do for them, it doesn't matter because I will reap what I sow. Maybe you may say, well, if people give back to you that you did not give to, that is a coincidence, that is luck, and you should stop helping people. That is ridiculous. What you are saying is nonsense. In this world, we reap what we sow. Nothing is a coincidence. Nothing happens by chance. Everything happens for a reason, whether, whether you know it, or not. Whether. So let me stop here. May God bless us.